Hello and welcome to the presentation of the ServerCut CNC software. In the next videos, including this one, we will talk about the multiple sections and functionalities of the software. The first part is going to be about the CAD section, which is where we're going to have our drawings being drawn and import, imported via the DXFM port. Then we're going to talk about the CAM section, where we're going to nest those files into a plate, plate of material. And then finally, on the CNC, we're going to cut those files on the material. As you can see right now, I'm using a work in progress version of the software. So many functionalities you might say today are not on the stable version, which is version 6. Introductions aside, welcome to the CAM section of the presentation of the SilverCut CNC software. Uh, first off, we're going to go from the left to the right as usual. So to start with, you can still create new documents, open previous documents, or save. As same deal with the CAD section. Then we have the feature type where you can make your um, your features, your parts in on the screen right now. You can make them host to be cut by the machine on the plate, so you could actually have a full full uh, full size sheet and make it. Uh, so you could make holes in there, example for making a tank or any other uh, any other things you might need it to be done this way. Then we have the selection tool where you can select all parts or all breaks um, to either move them or modify some sections of them. Pretty easy to use. And then we have the project settings, which is where you're gonna uh, put your fabrication head, which could be a plasma or oxy fuel. Or even a, a scriber, pneumatic scriber that can be added on the table. And then we have uh, the workpiece size, where you can where you can select the the size, so the the width and the length. And then we have the material types, which could be uh, mount steel, aluminum, or stainless. And then we have the thickness, where you can select uh, from a wide variety of thicknesses, starting from 28 gauge to up to 9 inches, if you're cutting a bit of ox of oxy fuel. And then we, and then right on the right of this uh, project settings icon, we have the plasma settings where you're going to be selecting your amperage for cutting those parts. Uh, right now, I currently have quarter inch mod steel, so I'm going to lower it down to 65 inches to have a better finish instead of the 125, which can be a quite hot and fast for what I'm what I want to do. I want better holes and a better finish overall, so I'm going to put 65 shielded consumables in there and have the best quality selected for a slower speed to make it even better. And then as you're selecting those settings, the curve, the pierce height, the cut height, the pierce, the length, the voltage will adjust depending on what thickness and amperage you're using there. Uh, something important to note to, to notice though is that the amperage will have to be adjust, adjusted on the power max itself. Not, there is no uh, communication whatsoever between the controller and the plasma to change the amperage so you'll still need to change the amperage on the plasma but the start signal will be coming from the CNC then we have the oxy fuel settings where you could modify your, your feed rate your curve and the type of corners you want for your for your uh, for your shapes um, pretty easy to figure out like uh, having any uh, cut chart from from the web According to uh, your uh, ox fuel torch you have on the machine, you'll be able to find out uh, which gas pressures you will need and feed rates. Then we have the grid nesting, which is used for um, nesting simple parts like a simple square. I do not advise using this uh, option for nesting different parts like say this flange and this rectangle. The grid nesting will not be working properly for that. So for any multiple parts or any different Parts are not rectangle. I strongly advise against uh, using that option. But pretty much, the grid nesting is working. As you place your first your first shape, the rectangle we have on the screen right now, you will need to place it in the bottom left corner. Uh, sorry, bottom right. But with but it is the bottom left corner uh, according to the logic of this Cartesian plan, since the x positive is going to be or bottom. And then you simply have your spacing between the x and y for in between the parts so you could completely fill out the sheet as best as possible but 
uh, I at least suggest simply using the true shape nesting all the time to make sure the parts are, uh, even if the rectangle parts have a little bit of offset to compensate for the lead in and lead out, which is taking some space in the single corner of the part. So clicking on true shape nesting, I can select between my two documents, which is uh, P1 is my flange and P2 is my rectangle. So for P1, I will be asking for five of them and P2, I will be asking for 20. I will be asking for 20 of those shapes. You could uh, have the field sheet option or the automatically had work pieces options, which are available with the pro package option, which um, you could place a huge amount of um, a lot of a lot of different shapes and even if I was to fill out the entire sheet and you need to nest a little bit more it will have a second worksheet on the the top left corner here next to sheet number one so you will be able to switch back to sheet number two and execute the cut after and then in the settings here we can select the spacing between the shapes the rotation step which is uh, the amount of degrees the shape will be rotated to place it so 90 degree we can uh, say that the rectangle for per se will be rotated 90 degrees at a time to try to fit it in as best as possible and then we have minimum distance from sheet which is uh, the spacing between the edge of the plate and the part and then here uh, we have placement accuracy which is used for how um, precise or complex you want the placement of the parts to be used or for the algorithm to be fine-tuned. I would say that placement accuracy of 2 and a geometry detail of 95% is the average for everything. Uh, if you have a lot more complex parts with a lot of weird edges, I suggest maybe lowering those factors, uh, let's say the geometry detail by like maybe 80% or more, and then have the, the placement accuracy up a few notches. So then to start the nesting, we're just going to click on start nesting. And it's going to place your parts. As you can see, it's pretty quick and pretty efficient placing. Uh, you might have some difficulties if you have a lot of weird shaped parts as, uh, you know, they could place a bit weirdly on your plate. But there's always place for a bit of fine tuning on, the, on, on that end. And now here, uh, after we've done the nesting, let's just click the check mark here since we accept that nesting has a pretty good one. Uh, here you have the sequence tool where you can um, change which part you want to do first. So let's say we could uh, do the rectangles first and then cut the flange. Or you could change uh, which hole you want to cut first on the plate. So you could select cutting which holes will be better or actually which um, shapes would be best. But for now, let's just click on parts as it is a lot more efficient to go one shape at a time and a lot less back and forth between all those shapes. And then after the nesting is done, you will be ready to, to put the program you have right now and put it in the CNC, clicking those two arrows there, and you'll be ready to cut the parts. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next part, which is going to be carving the CNC part of the Supercut CNC software.